Two things that we talked about again yesterday that we want to revisit. We are either going to be passive or active. Passive would be just, I look at my target, I throw a ball. That's it. Basically, I just show up and hope things happen for the better. Active is I'm picking a spot and that's where I'm going to attack. When I actively focus on that spot, when I purposely pick something and I actively go for it, my miss zone will be much smaller. So if I'm picking something in the middle of my partner's body, there's no reason that we should be missing outside of his body. So if I miss toward his hips, if I was going for his belt, that's an acceptable miss. But to go for this and be out here, you're too talented for that. Yes, it could happen, but not at the amount that it happens for you guys because we're not actively focused. That's number one. Number two, we have a tendency of wanting to look up. I'm tall, but even the shortest guy in this room right now, his chest and up is still too flat for our throws. So what we want to do is we want to pick out something below the waist. Look at your partner's knee. Now you don't have to try to fire it and light him up, but look at his knee. Make that your active focus and throw there. What does that do? It helps build a habit of working downhill. Because the problem with us right now, if I'm playing catch and everything, look at me, everything's flat. If that's what my catch is, now I'm gonna ask myself to get on a mound and now work downhill. I haven't practiced that yet today, but now I'm gonna do it in a game. So you see where we can struggle in games because we're not properly warmed up. So let's actively look at something below. Pick one of, one of his knees. If you want to take a step back and start smaller, pick his belt buckle, but do not go above the belt. Good. And watch how your consistency picks up. Very good. Good. Now we're seeing consistency. Partners, feedback helps. Good. See the late reaction? That's a good sign right there. That ball had life. All right. If you're going to miss, miss there. Good. Again, good miss. Very nice. See how late he was to turn that glove? He wasn't sure what it was gonna do. That means that ball was late. Very nice. Very good. See, you made me uncomfortable. It's good. Because we wanna make the hitters uncomfortable, guys. If I can make my throwing partner uncomfortable, then I know the hitter will be too. Very good. Good. See, that ball just kept going down. See, now you're not aiming the ball, okay? Because you're throwing with a purpose. You have a spot that you're purposely picking. Good. It's not as fun to catch like this. Did you actively pick a spot or are you slipping back to the old ways? Guys, we will naturally want to go back to being passive. We will want to go back to the old ways, which was simply look and throw. You have to actively, you're going to hear that word a lot, actively focus on what you want to do. So I have to actively focus on actively picking a spot. That's why your best games, you will be mentally exhausted after it. You won't be able to really go out to dinner and hang out, you'll just want to go to bed. Those will be your best games because that's how your mind was attacking. If you think back now to your worst games, you probably found yourself sitting in the dugout like, what just happened? No mental exhaustion whatsoever. Maybe physical, but not mental. We have to purposely on every single throw, on every single pitch, build a habit of having a purpose. Those last two throws, those weren't purpose throws. Go ahead. Good. Two more each. Nice. Come on up. The reason why people think it's just so difficult to become a professional baseball player is because I think deep down, they know the discipline it takes to do that. It doesn't take much discipline to be good. It takes a lot of talent and opportunity to be good. But if you want to be great, you need talent, you need opportunity, you need discipline. So think of a habit, right? 
what is a habit? Something you do often without thinking. Well, how does a habit form? It had to start somewhere. So let's go back to habits, ones we don't want on a baseball field. Walking. You walk on a baseball field, you're right on the bench. You won't make the tryout. I'm telling you right now. If you're at a tryout and you're caught walking, you're out. We have to be go jogging, running everywhere. So where does that habit begin of walking? Well, maybe it's from down there to here. Maybe it's when I say, hey, come on, bring it up, and we walk. Because we just don't think that it's important. But understand, you're building habits in here, good or bad. You're obviously here to build good habits, correct? Okay, so let's focus on all the little things. It's okay to make mistakes, but when you're corrected on it, don't repeat the mistake. To take pressure off of ourselves as pitchers, we want to increase the movement on our ball. I learned this the hard way. I was a high pitch count guy. I had a lot of strikeouts, but I also threw a lot of pitches. So what we want to do is, especially early in the count, let's utilize movement and let's let our fielders get the job done. And even if the fielders on that play don't get the job done, that's not on you. You have to do your job. So what we want to do is we don't want to let him hit it. We want poor contact. Poor contact results in outs. We're gonna start with our two seam and then we're gonna to go to our change up, all right? And after that, we're gonna, we're, so we're gonna play catch with each of them and then we're gonna to go toward our flat ground. Sound good? All right, so let's all put our two seam grip out. In case you weren't sure or forgot, remember it's a two seam because when it comes out of our fingers, how many seams are, are rotating through the air? One, two. I get back to the beginning, one, two, correct? as opposed to our four seamer, which is one, two, three, four. Okay, so with our two seam spin, there are a couple ways to do it, but let's start with a foundation here. Let's get our two throwing fingers in between the skinny part of the seams. The pressure is gonna come from the pointer finger. So where our four seamer, we want equal pressure with our pointer and middle to keep that ball straight. This, we want the ball to move. Now a two seamer is going to move hand side, so a righty, Two seamer is going to move down and in to a right handed batter, lefty down and into a left handed batter. Okay, another name for a two seamer is sinker. Very good. So I'm going to have my fingers between the skinny part. Let's get closer. Let's get closer. Every one of you is good. You're going to throw and you're going to get two seam spin, but that doesn't mean you're going to get sinker movement that you want. All right. Now, yeah, there are mechanics that come into this. If you're doing something wrong with your glove side, it will impact your throw. But for right now, we're focusing on our grip. So if I throw this right here, this is where it partners, two seamer and change up, even more important that we get your feedback. Does the ball move hand side? Does it sink? Does it move late? Another big one. One that moves early out of the hand is useless. We want late. Partners, that's where you can help. So he throws this throw and, and partner's like, ah, didn't really move. Okay. He's not going to change radically. All he's going to do is maybe apply a little more pressure to the inside of his pointer finger here and then see what happens. He's going to maybe adjust his thumb a little bit, maybe a little more off to the side or a little looser, and that's it. And then throw and see what happens. You're kind of building a recipe here. And then that way it goes back to what Jake said earlier. When it works, all right, repeat it. It works again. Repeat it. Now you start knowing what it should feel like because when I did this, I got that. It's not gonna be perfect, right? But you'll know the difference when it starts having late movement. Again, partners, feedback. So everybody hold it out. I just wanna show you, I already showed McMahon. So I would be a little up here to start so your fingers aren't too far apart. A little pressure in there, okay, good. So that pressure in there. So what you'll notice is, we're having pressure on the inside of our pointer finger that's closest to our middle finger, right? The inside portion of it. And that, see, you're not even against that seam, so that ball's more likely to slide out. Right in there is good. So now you play with it. Play with it until you see movement. Let's start with this, let's play catch with that, and then we'll come back with the change up that way again, we're not overloading, all right? So if you have a ball that, and you don't need it, just put it in your pocket, just put it in your pocket, because we're gonna come back to it. See, even a head nod, a little glove bump, something to tell them, hey, that was good. And pitchers, watch your own rotation. Now, do you need him to tell you that was good? 
No, hold up, hold up. Why? How could you tell it had late break? His reaction. Do you need him to tell you that that was not good? Look where your hand is. If this ball's supposed to move down in hand side, where did yours go? Yours cut across glove side. You know right there, not good. Make sense? And in games, you'll strike a guy out on that, but you'll still, after you get the ball back from the catcher, you'll still want to remind yourself about those pressure points. Again, sometimes we just get a bad throw. It happens. Sometimes we make a great throw and the guy hits it into the gap. It happens. So we're not gonna put that burden on ourselves to say I have to be perfect, but we do wanna see the consistency. So if that's the only one you did, or two, great. But if it starts to be like every other one is cutting, something's wrong. And it could be mechanical. But for now, let's again focus on the grip. Go ahead, keep going, couple more. Very nice. Good. There you go. You can slow down on the speed. You don't need the speed. You want to build touch. You want to get more touch with that grip. Good. Very nice. Late. That was good. Late. Hold the ball. All right, so the changeup, right, has to play off of our fastball, right? It's not, it's not mandatory that you're, you have a great two-seamer. I mean, like I said, I didn't really throw a two-seamer. I didn't throw many changeups either. But toward the end of my playing, especially when my arm was struggling, I really relied on those pitches. And then looking back, I said to myself, why didn't I throw those more? I didn't know. No one really told me that the way I'm telling you. Do we want to rely on these pitches? Again, keep our pitch count down. Now the changeup is a great pitch because it appeals to a hitter's desire to crush a fastball. He sees fastball out of your hand, he wants to crush it. So when does a changeup really work? In a hitter's count. 1-0. 2-0, 2-1, and if you have command of it, 3-1, great pitch. It can bail you out of jams that you get yourself into with the count. Make sense? So we want to really build this pitch up even more so than our breaking ball. That's why we're starting with this. With our change up, as opposed to our power fingers, we're going to throw with our weaker pair of fingers. All right, so guys that know the grip, go ahead and get it, hold it out. Guys that aren't sure, I'm going to help you. Okay, so the only thing about this is you're gonna get four seam spin, so it's straight. If we want sinker spin, see the letter U? Now you do it along with me as I show. See the letter U? Okay, we're gonna put that into the bottom creases of our middle and ring finger, right? So now if you guys hold out your grips, if we look between their fingers, look it, you see part of the seam? It's right. Part of the seam, it's right. Nah, more of the full seam, set it back a little bit more, okay? Again, that's gonna help you with stability, perfect. So now let me see. Okay, too much of the seam, part of the seam. No, I, can't, I can't see any of the seam. So I wanna get that seam in the groove. That's gonna help again when I throw the ball, that ball doesn't just fly out of my hands. All right, so I have my middle finger. The middle finger replaces the pointer from the two seam. That's the pressure point. Thumb against the seam. So we're not having our thumb underneath the ball, it's against the seam right there. All right? So now, look at this is a great grip to look at. What can he now that he's got the grip play around with? Maybe he can bring his pinky up a little bit. Maybe he can soften his thumb, move it around, pressure points. You have to play catch with this often and then play around with it. Hold your hand up. See, that's a good grip right there. Maybe he slides his pointer finger up if it's a little too fast or flat. Play with it. But we don't do this. I see this often from people being taught. that We don't force our thumb down. It's called pronating. We don't force that. When you throw, you naturally pronate. But if you force it to try to get movement, you're gonna destroy your shoulder, okay? That's where impingements come from, and those, those are not good. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we understand it's our grip, it's our pressure, 
that's going to produce the rotation. Questions on this? No? Okay. So now again, as a team, you're next to him, right? Check his grip periodically. Because when you're also helping somebody else, you're helping yourself. Okay? You're next to Ryan. Check his grip periodically, right? A little Ridgewood love, right? All right, back to your spots, change ups, and then we're gonna go right into flat ground. Good. Nice. A little early. Make sure you keep your eyes where they belong, right? Oh, wait, hold up. CJ, where were you looking right there? See how we go back? I'm not trying to overload you with things, but when we build, we have to keep what we've built in place. Matthew, keep what you've built in place. Raise your hand, be honest. Raise your hand if your eyes have gone from the knees back up to the chest or the head. See? So, we talk about habits. Obviously, that's a habit for you, to let your focus drift back. That's passive. It's not a habit to be active yet. So how do we build the habit? One correct repetition at a time. So everybody reset your focus. And maybe partner, maybe if I'm CJ's partner right now, I say, hey, focus on the knee. When I say it to him, what is that gonna do for me? It's gonna help remind me when it's my turn to throw to focus in the right spot. Go ahead. Okay, see where you're going? Stay through the target, keep your eyes through the target. Good, McMahon. Nice, very good. Very good. Good, let's not squat down, we're not catching yet. Let's grab another one. Good, very good. Nice. Good.